police to quarters. Run out the gun. Stand by the starboard battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Blink stops ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. <laughs> Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. Midshipman Hornblower on His Majesty's ship indefatigable. And it was then that I first set foot on any soil other than my native England. And yet, when Midshipman Jack Brace and I stood on shore at Plymouth Harbor, I had no idea of what was to come. An expeditionary force was about to embark against France, and Brace and I were being properly superior about the files of soldiers who stood drawn up awaiting orders. <laughs> I remember how we nodded gravely to each other, Jack Brace and I, but, but even while we did, Lieutenant Mason turned and called to me. I crossed the key and reported with no idea of what might be in store. Sir, Hornblower, there's a special duty for you. Sir? This is Lord Edrington, Major commanding His Britannic Majesty's 43rd Foot. And this if is... If you don't mind, Lieutenant Mason, I'll handle this myself. You, sir. Your name's Hornblower? Yes, sir. It would be more proper if you address me as my lord. Uh, aye, aye, sir. Uh, uh, <coughs> my lord? Hornblower. Peculiar name, Hornblower. Family name? My lord, the, the name Hornblower... No, no, don't get your back up. If it's your name, it's your name, and you're saddled with it. Make the best of all things, eh? Lieutenant Mason here tells me you speak French. Well, um, a little, sir. A little, eh? If it's enough. Don't speak a word of it myself, leave that to the French themselves. Mr. Hornblower... There's a problem of communication between Lord Edrington commanding this expedition and the French forces. Sir? Uh, this gentleman here, uh, allow me, the Marquis de Pouzoge, Brigadier General in the service of His Most Christian Majesty, Louis XVII. Uh, sir, may I present to Midshipman Hornblower? Ah, enchanté. Oh, Monsieur le Marquis. Here, 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 here. Never this folder all. Long we stand here chattering, long we'll take us to get on our way. There's a matter of um, tides or some such, eh, Mason? Uh, yes, my lord. The transport ships are standing by. Uh, we must sail on the tide, of course. Exactly. And separate transports for my battalion and the French. Reach the coast of France together, go ashore together, work together, all that sort of rubbish. Well, Mason, can the Navy spare midshipman Hornblower? I am certain there will be no difficulty, my lord. But, sir, you mean, you mean I'm not to remain on board the indefatigable, sir? You speak French, Hornblower. Uh, You'll be detached. You'll go on board the transport which carries the French troops. Well, sir, yes. Don't look so startled, Mr. Hornblower. It's a big opportunity. You'll not only go on board, you'll land with them in France. It's a cross-channel invasion. They make history. Don't you know that England wants the Bourbons back on the French throne? The convoy sailed on the evening tide. From the deck of the transport, I could see the indefatigable leading the line. I felt not very lost. But at least I, I preferred the French to Lord Edrington. I... I would never admit it, but 
Almost, I believe, he'd make a botch of the whole expedition. And we are not the only expeditionary force, monsieur. The main body will land at Quiberon, oh. 5,000 men. Oh, well, that's a little better, sir, but uh, I... I beg your pardon, monsieur, I, I overreach my... No, 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 please to continue. Well, <laughs> well, even 7,000 men, even 10 or 15... <laughs> the French Republic has 100,000. Ah, but observe... The main army of the revolutionaries, where are they situated? They are here, in the south of France, to come north to attack our main force. By which way must they travel? All right. I see. By, by, well, by way of this road. Precisely. The coastal road. And observe where we land. We, the small force of British and French royalists. There is a bridge, Monsieur Ambroy. Ah, and if... If the bridge is destroyed, the revolutionaries can be held back. Even so, held ah. by a small force while our main body raises the standard of his most Christian majesty, Louis the Seventeenth. Yes, I see. First through all of Brittany, and then on, on to Paris. We shall save France, monsieur. We, the few men who hold the bridge at Moussiac. <laughs> rounded Belle Isle and dropped anchor. There was Musillac, and beyond it lay the Vilaine River, and there was the bridge. The invasion craft went ashore without a single shot being fired. My feet were wet with salt water, but for the first time in my young life, I was standing on foreign soil. Bonda, I want you to get yourself a horse. A horse? Yes, one of these. The French are going to set up their troops at the bridge. Yes. Blow it up and stay there. Yes, sir. My troops, the 43rd, will be down the river half a mile. There's, there's a ford, you see. Yes, sir. Shallow place where the enemy might try to get across. We'll have to keep both places secure, of course. Yes, but, uh, but what do I do with the horse? Sir? Ride it, man. You'll be with the French. But I can't say I trust them. Undisciplined troops, you know. Yes, yes. I want you to ride back and forth and keep me informed. Well, Keep your eye on them. Let me know the moment they consider any monkey tricks. Yes. Heaven knows what they'll do next. My lord, I, I, I've never been on a horse before. And it should be quite an experience. Here. What is the name of Satan's Red? What, my lord? It's down the beach. What are the French unloading from those supply boats? I'm sort of contraption. It's a guillotine, sir. Guillotine? Yes, my lord. They're, they're taking it to Musiac and setting it up in the town square, I've heard. Use it to knock the heads off people, don't they? Yes, I must say. It startled me too, my lord. But the Marquis says some of the people in Musiac deserve it. And does he now? The revolutionaries began it, he says, and it's only fair that the royalists should give them a taste of their own medicine. I, I, I can't say that I like it myself, sir. <laughs> did not at all. That afternoon, after the bridge was blown up and the troops disposed, the French set up their headquarters in Musiac in the village inn. A guillotine, too, was set up. I was in the kitchen where a French woman was preparing food, and the window was open. <gasps> what is it? What is it? It's, it's only a drum. It comes from the village square. No, it's only a drum, mademoiselle, really. But you can see it from the window here. The guillotine. Oui, monsieur. They're about to use it, too. Five men with their hands tied behind their backs and they're marching one of them towards the stairs leading up. To... I'd rather not hear it, nor see it. Mademoiselle, thanks for the water, but have you got something stronger? What was that? Gentlemen, quiet! Colonel, he comes from the village! Gentlemen, we must interrupt our breakfast. We must saddle up at once and join our troops. It would appear the battle has been joined.
back to that day, and my legs ache at the thought. The horse I rode was worse than any heaving deck. I clung to his mane and was carried back and forth between the bridge and the ford, between the so-called frogs and Lord Edrington's lobsters. At every musket shot, the animal started like a frightened stag. Pardon me, so warm, Lord. Don't you know aught about a horse? No, no. You saw him on the razor as though a pillar rope. Girl, I, I wish they hadn't their worse. Get down, oh, man. Get down the point and he's camped to death. Therefore, that's better. Uh, to my mind, a sailor on horseback is more dangerous than a regiment of raw recruits. Yes, well, what news from our friends, the Frenchman? Eh? Well, there's very little happening, sir. No attack of any size? Well, a few attempts, my lord. Made by less than a single company of the enemy. Beaten off, of course. Well, several shots from our cannon scattered them like pigeons, my lord. The Marquis said they're, they're a rabble army. The, the cannon fire was accurate. Oh, sir, the, the cannon are manned by British seamen. Midshipman Jack Brace directed the fire, I know. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Your own cannon brought ashore, of course. Well, it's a comfort to have one's own countrymen directing fire instead of those raw recruits of Poussage. Uh, how well are they holding up, Hornblower? Well, there's no sign of panic among them, sir. I should hope not. Opposed by only half a company. Odd, Hornblower. Extremely odd. What's odd, my lord? That there aren't more of them. You, you've had no trouble here either, sir? The company of the enemy, no more. No attempt to cross the fall in force. I thought they were burning powder unnecessarily, sir. They're not fools, Hornblower. At any rate, there's no harm in assuming they're not. Hmm. Hornblower, do the French have any rear guard out towards Quiberon? Towards Quiberon, sir? Blasted! Can't you hear a plain question? Is there or is there not a rear guard, Hornblower? Yes, sir, but, but, but that's behind us, to the north. There can't be any... Uh, uh, <coughs> a rear guard, Lord Bella? I, I don't know, frankly. Then find out, Hornblower. Find out at once. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> There was no rear guard out towards Kibberon, and when I arrived at the bridge, I reined up for a moment beside Jack Brace's position. Ah, Commander of the Horse Marines, Hornblower. Ah, Mr. Brace, I presume, huh? No, no, I put him for a field marshal, Horatio. <laughs> Notice of what positive genius I disposed my artillery. Uh, and how stands matters with our redcoat friends? Oh, the lobsters are still standing. Oh, they're fine at standing, jolly fine. The question is, can they unbend enough to fight? Oh, there's not been enough fighting to tell. True enough. The same thing here. So I'll tell you this, my friend. It may be treason, but I'm inclined to believe these Frenchies could give a better account of themselves than the 43rd foot. Mm. I don't hold with these spit and polish lobster backs. One attack and they'd cave in, I'm sure of it. Edrington's worried about an attack on our rear. Is he now? I told the Marquis about it. Uh, who's old? What did he say? Oh, he just shrugged. <laughs> Answer enough, eh? One gesture from a Frenchman tells more than a thousand words. Ask me, Lord Edrington's a silly fool. No, I'm not quite so sure of that. Eh? Clear as a bony nose on his face. Rear guard. How can the enemy possibly attack from the rear? Now look here, Hornblower. Here we are up on a good high hill. Gives elevation. Excellent spot for cannon. Here we are, I say. We can see the entire country behind us. If there's any sign of... Um, of... Hornblower, what are you staring at? I don't believe it. I simply can't believe it. Dust. Just a cloud of dust. It's the enemy. In force behind us. Brace, ready, they're ready to attack us from the rear. Look out for your guns, Jack. I will. Look out for them. Warn Lord Eddington. Come on. Up. Up, you confounded man. Come on. A tanker. The enemy, they're coming. I expected nothing else. From the direction of Quiberon, eh? I, I didn't believe it was possible. In war, all things are possible. Clever of them, I must say. A diversionary action in front of us, and meanwhile... Yes, but our main forces of Quiberon, sir. It was, Hornblower. Must have been overwhelmed somehow. How's the Marquis' force holding out? Oh, it, it looked bad, sir. Panic? Oh, they seemed badly disorganized when I left them. Ah, no training, no discipline. I expect they'll run like rabbits. Oh, no, no, sir, they won't. What's to stop them? Undisciplined troops, no time for training, sudden attack from an unexpected quarter. Oh, they're, they're brave soldiers, sir, sir. I, I've observed that. What's bravery got to do with it? Discipline, Hornblower. That's the requirement, discipline. On the right What did I tell you? Here they come, running like rabbits. We shall have to cover their retreat. 
Retreat, sir. Of course, man, to the shore. Back to your ship. But we, we, we shall never make it, sir. We, we'll be overwhelmed. I think not. So began what was to me an incredible experience. Around us streamed the routed royalists, frantic with fear. The enemy launched attack after attack. A troop of cavalry bore down upon us. But meanwhile, the British soldiers formed ranks as, as calmly as if on parade. Mr. Carruthers, the 43rd foot will form a square, if you please. Yes, the Lord. 43rd! Hold! 43rd! Hold! Form in two And yet, in a moment, it seemed, there we were, inside a hollow square of red-coated backs. And the cavalry came on. Very good. Stopped them for the time being, eh? Scrubbers, the 43rd will resume columns and advance. <laughs> Each attack was beaten off, but each was followed by another attack, and another. The sun beat down hot and heavy as a hammer on an anvil. It seemed as if we would never gain the shore and our waiting ship. Well, there it is, in sight at last, the beach, Mr. Hornblower. Yes, Lord, down below us. I see your boats are busy taking off the boilers. Well, we'd best get down there at once, my lord. Nonsense, Mr. Hornblower. If we do, we shall have the Frenchies on top of everyone. It's up to the 43rd to contain the enemy until the beach is cleared of everyone else. I see. And then, sir? Then we shall see about getting ourselves off. Uh, Mr. Carruthers, if you please. My lord. Good spot for a stand, would you say, Mr. Carruthers? Here, yeah, my lord. It's the only clear approach to the beach. And stand they did. The enemy attacked wave after wave until only to break and shatter on the firm lines of the 43rd. Men went down, and the ranks closed up and stayed closed. And behind us on the beach, the evacuation proceeded. Finally, the last of the Royalists was taken off in our ship's boats. with their heavy knapsacks and the regimental colors and our country's flag streaming above them. And my Lord Edrington and I and his staff on horse sawing at the reins to keep our beasts from falling down on the steep slope and the trampled stretch of sandy beach. And then there we were at last at the water's edge. And we were in it, scrambling through the surf towards the ship's boats. Oh, there. Do we stay on this unpounded shore forever? Oh, uh, uh, aye, sir, my Lord. Give way on the oars. We all... Trout there! I say, Hornblower. What's that? Look at him. Who? Up forward, his lordship. Huh? He got his coattails ringing wet. Expensive coattails, too, you can be sure. Yeah, so he did. But he got us all off. Royalists and all. Oh, Jack, you should have seen it. The whole battalion marching, never out of step. Form square, aim and fire, you know. March again, form square and fire and... Over and over again. Stood like a rock, eh? Yes. <laughs> you know, Jack, those those lobsters of ours, they, they're not bad in a pinch. Not bad at all. Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.